Hello and welcome to another video on Orbiter Space Flight Simulator. In this video I'll try to explain how to set up the game and I will also do some simple gameplay. I call it a game, you might call it an application, a program, a simulator, whatever you want. Uh, to me it's a game. I like it and it has gameplay and so on. Uh, so anyway, when you launch the game this is what you are greeted with this window and it is automatically open to the scenarios tab. Here you select what you want to play basically. Some of these come with the base distribution of Orbiter, some of them are add-ons like this Delta Glider XR1 that you have to download separately. Uh, they are all free so uh, uh, well as far as I know all Orbiter add-ons are free. It might even be in the license that they have to be free. Either way, Parameters tab, here you can set the realism, the perturbations, the uh, brightness of the stars, the instruments and panels, settings and so on. Uh, these perturbations will offset, uh, they will change your trajectory on, on very long voyages. So, uh, Or even not so long, the non-spherical gravity for example, if you orbit around the Earth, uh, the gravity is not the same in all places so you know as you orbit this will change your trajectory a bit a visual effects here you set the graphics i recommend setting everything on there's you know if you have a decent computer it will run just fine i'm running this on linux so it's basically emulated and it still runs really well even as i record it this is the modules tab where you set up the plugins I have quite a bit. As you can see, I have the uh, DirectX 9 client for graphics. By default, it uses DirectX 7, but that one is uh, quite slow. So, some MMV MFDs like uh, Transx, Aerobrake, Attitude, and so on. Uh, these are the video settings. Here you can set stuff like resolution and also the DX9 settings. A joystick. I don't have a joystick. You don't need a joystick to play this, so there's no point. And here you can set some more detailed uh, stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else. There's also an About tab, which says who made it and uh, how to contact them. So we are just going to go with this default that comes with the game already, uh, the Delta Glider which is a futuristic space plane designed with aerodynamic control surfaces and powerful engines. Okay, and we will go to Brighton Beach, which isn't in California, or I think it's in California, isn't it? Anyway, uh, we will go to the Brighton Beach on the moon, and you just select this and click Launch Orbiter, and now it will load. And here we are on the moon. We can change this, change the view a bit, and we can zoom out. As you can see, here we are. And where is the Earth? Not really sure. Well, anyway, let's get back to Brighton Beach. This is the base. It's just this building here and some landing pads. I imagine that the base is underground, shielded from the micro meteorites and uh, radiation and so on. And this is the internal view. Well, one of them anyway. And here is another one. You can control this with the arrow keys. And you can see here this is the, uh, the aerodynamic surfaces controls. And also I think this is the, oh, these are the engine gimbal. Well, anyway, this is the uh, fuel status, the compass or heading indicator or, or whatever. These are some of the switches. We're going to turn everything on. Uh, this is the, whatever it's called, you know what it is. The angle, the, here's the angle of attack and this is a vertical speed. These are the two MFDs, which are the most important parts that we will use. Uh, these are the 
RCS modes, off rotation and linear, and the aerodynamic controls, which we will switch off. And these are the autopilot. Radiator deployed. Okay. So these are the autopilot's kill rotation, stops you from rotating, prograde turns you into the direction where you're going, retrograde turns you in the opposite direction, orbit normal and orbit anti-normal turn you normal to the orbit, uh, level horizon turns you, uh, makes you level with horizon obviously, and hover hold all makes you hover at the altitude. So this is the elevator trim, air brake, nose cone, uh, docking release, we won't be using this right now, and the gears. That's about it, that's about as much control as we will use. There are three views, as, like I said, this is the internal view, here you can see the cockpit and the passengers, sort of. And you can see that the displays are reflected in the cockpit, which is pretty nice. Anyway, we will be going into a polar orbit, and for that we need to set the inclination, which will be 90. If I can actually... No? Okay. I can't enter. Well, we don't need the align plane. We'll just do it manually. This is the map. And we will also need the orbit MFD. Okay, let's go. We'll just hover up. You can see we're going up. It has hover engines, very powerful hover engines. And I will stow the gears. Don't really need to, but I will anyway. So let's Gear up. turn that off and let's rotate to zero, 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 which is north. Okay, overshot it a bit. And let's go. So these are our, our uh, orbital elements. You can see the periapsis, apoapsis, altitude, eccentricity, period, time to periapsis, time to apoapsis, velocity, inclination. Let's turn that. Let's try to control the inclination. But uh, what's that? Uh, ascending node, something like that. Well, we won't be needing those things right now. I will go into a polar orbit, and then I guess I will go into an equatorial orbit, and then I will return to Brighton Beach. Hopefully, without crashing. So we are expanding our orbit. Let's actually cut the engines right now. Let's turn prograde. And wait until we reach apoapsis, which is the highest point in our orbit. And now let's burn. Because if we burn before we reach apoapsis, we will uh, we will raise our apoapsis too much. We don't really want that right now. We want to keep it nice and low so we can land again. And I'm moving back and forth a bit because I want to control where the apoapsis is. Okay, so it's a bit in front of us now. And we are almost in orbit now. 
let me actually switch to the other view. It's clearer here a lot, isn't it? Okay, so we want to get our eccentricity to zero or close to zero. That's good. We are 20 kilometers above the surface of the moon. Here we are. I can change the field of view. And let's keep it at 70. Okay, so that is our orbit. We are inclined uh, 90 degrees, which is straight north, as you can see here. Uh, these lines are because of the projection of the map. And we are going to almost arrive back at Brighton Beach on this trajectory. But we are actually going to go around until we come to the equator on the dark side. Okay, so if we want an equatorial, equatorial orbit, we need to burn a uh, normal and we need to burn uh, into the pro direction. And I could actually display that to you if the aligned planes MFT worked, but yeah, I can't. For some reason, I decided that I can't uh, enter anything. So we will just burn here. And you can see that our orbit is becoming more equatorial. Slowly. Let's just speed up time a bit. So our inclination is now 0 0.21 degrees, which is about as good as we'll get it, I think. So, because uh, the points are um, like that. So now we want to go. So you can see that this burn uh, to change for, to into the equatorial orbit has changed our apoapsis and we want to reduce that back to 22 or close to 22 kilometers or even less maybe uh, no Okay, so now we want to go to the apoapsis and fix this. I messed up just a little bit, but uh, it'll be okay. We have a lot of fuel. It's not like we have to watch anything. Okay, so that's about decent. And now we will once again uh, burn so that our trajectory will take us over Brighton Beach. And to do that, let's try to burn 
I'm not really sure. Let's burn uh, in the plus direction again. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay. Now let's zoom in. Over Brighton Beach and adjust it so it goes right over it. No. We want to burn back a bit. Okay, that looks okay, and we will also turn retrograde and fix our orbit. Okay, so now our periapsis is 14 kilometers. And that should be, let's actually make it 9.5. Okay, now let's turn, actually let's remain retrograde. Now we just, we are here and we need to get here. So let's do that. Okay, now it's time to reduce our velocity so that we'll land on Brighton Beach. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that looks okay. Now let's turn prograde. I'm not really sure how far we are, but we should probably start braking now. And we are going to pass it, unfortunately. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I can just see it. Okay, let's turn. We are quite low now, so I have turned on the hover autopilot.
Okay. Not really sure what it's doing. It's supposed to just hold the altitude, but never mind, let's just get to Brighton Beach, which is right ahead of us now. I don't know if you can see it, it's just a couple of pixels. I can zoom in a bit. There you go. There are add-ons and all sorts of things that you can use to make landing uh, easier, but I'm not going to use them right now. Uh, for one reason is that it doesn't work as well on Linux. Sometimes the MFDs just don't function. You saw that with the Align MFD, it didn't work. So, and let's just turn that off for right now because I want to fall onto the base and that should actually happen no let's break Okay, well, it's going to be close. Uh, why is it? No, no. Oh, so it holds the altitude at which I enabled it, okay. So we're a bit closer yet again. This isn't good piloting, but it is what it is. And let's just use the linear translation. Let's just fall down. Okay, and let's turn on the ho hover again. And let's stop. Okay. Why am I going up again?
Okay, please just... Just hold this altitude, please. And let's stop. And let's rotate towards that pad over there. And let's fall down a bit. And we could set up this, no, no, okay, there we go, we're moving straight ahead. I just want to land on the pad and then we will stop. No, <laughs> don't do that. Oh crap, okay, well. Uh, what, what is it doing? What is it doing? What? Okay, yeah. So normally you would use uh, something, the dock transmitter to land. But I am an expert and I can land like this. And now I'm not really sure where I'm going. Okay, so I'm going a bit back. Now let's land. And let's deploy the gear. And let's move forward a bit. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just crash down. Okay, so this is the moon. There's not much gravity here, so we can just crash down without powering. So we have taken off into a polar orbit. We changed it into an equatorial orbit. Then we uh, change the alignment again to match that of 
Brighton Beach and then we landed after a lot of trouble and hopefully that was kind of instructive. It, it definitely wasn't the best way to do it. The way to do it would be to find the uh, the the frequency of this pad of number four and then you would use the oh right okay so we would use this to maneuver more effectively and also simply to stop at Brighton Beach you would do some calculations uh, how much time it would take it would take your ship to stop uh, when to burn and so on but I just did that by a sort of I guessed and we missed a bit and we uh, we overshot it but it doesn't matter we have lots of fuel as you can see if you wanted to go from uh, the surface of the earth and to Brighton Beach you would need to be a bit more exact because there's not really that much fuel uh, to do it the fuel is kind of tight I don't know if this with this ship but certainly with some ships you have to be an expert to do it well either way we are here safely and uh, that is the end of the video and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time I guess